Hey, this is Corey Wong with Guitarist Magazine. Today I'm here to talk about a little bit of my technique and rhythm approach and also kind of my philosophy on gear. Um, really realistically for me, when it comes to gear, I'm not super picky, but there's certain gear that just inspires me more right out of the gate and there's certain gear that allows me to get to my sound right away. I'm not right now super picky about specific amps. There's a lot of amps that I really like, but the ones that I like the most are the ones that just kind of get me to my sound, a big fat, clean sound, something that sounds in your face uh, and punchy. And I can get there from a JC120 or a Fender Twin uh, or like the DV Mark Raw Dog I've been using a lot lately. So I'm not like a, a, a tube amp snob. I'm not a digital snob. It's just like whatever kind of gets me to my sound, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a way to get there. Sometimes it means turning the gain to like 0.1 and then turning the master volume up or something. And sometimes it means just putting all the knobs at noon. That's great. Um, but the kind of gear that I like is the stuff that I can just kind of set up and it sounds great. Um, as far as pedals, I normally like to use a compressor. Um, and I like compressors that have a blend knob because then I can still have some of the natural dynamics of the instrument itself, but then also kind of a squash sound underneath, kind of in the same way that studio guys use parallel compression. Same exact concept for why I use a compressor when I play. Um, other effects that I use, I like to have an overdrive. I normally like to have two stages of overdrive. Um, something that's kind of in the Tube Screamer realm and then something that's a little bit heavier in the either Tube Screamer, Dumble, Klon, Family. I don't know, any of them are fine. E either of them, any of those, some, some sort of drive in that family is great for me. Um, but again, it's just like sometimes certain pedals really inspire me and draw something out. Sometimes they don't, but either way, I'm kind of happy with whatever, because I'm gonna sound like me either way, you know? Um, and then, there's other pedals that it's just like kind of fun to have. I love having a wah pedal. Um, honestly, I like digital wahs better because they don't have all the <laughs> right, like all the extra pot noise from whatever. Uh, so I've been using the Eventide H9. There's a, I don't even know what, what algorithm it's on, but it's just like the wah setting. And I plug in an expression pedal and I use that for a wah, uh, which is great because it's clean and it's got a great sound. I've dialed it in to where, like I can tell, I, I like deciding where the peaks are. Normally for me, I pull the peaks a little bit lower than what the standard is. And then it's great. I've also used the, some of the Line 6 wahs and they're great. Uh, and also um, I like to have an envelope filter, more of like a Tron up, at least that's what it's called on the Line 6 pedals. And then the H9 has one that's also just kind of like an auto wah. Um, I've never loved the, the old analog Qtron, although that's what I know they're probably emulating. Um, I can just never get that one to sound exactly the way that I want it to sound. And some of the digital ones, I can. So analog versus digital, I don't really care. It's whatever gets me to the sound that I'm hearing in my head. I'm not really precious about either. And actually it's kind of nice when it's digital because <laughs> you can save it on a computer and Dropbox yourself the settings and you can share it with your friends. Uh, so that's cool. Um, other things, like for when I record, a lot of times I'll use the, the UA Apollo. Like when I record my own records, a lot of times I'm just plugging direct in and I'll use like a UA guitar amp. Um, sometimes I use the, oddly enough, their, their SVTR, the bass amp, sounds really great. It's got a fat, clean sound. Sometimes I just use like an SSL compressor or like an SSL channel strip, which is really fun because it's got a nice compression and EQ. I can just kind of get an, a really good in your face direct sound. Um, but also, there's recording sessions that I've done where I've used like the Logic Pro stock amps and those are really great. There's a song that I recorded called Cosmic Sands with Tom Mish. He and I were hanging out 
we recorded a song at his Airbnb in Los Angeles. He was just in town for a while. Uh, so we recorded a wrote and recorded a song together. We both plugged directly in. He wanted to use like the envelope filter for whatever auto wah from Logic and we both just use a Logic amp and it sounded great. But again, it was just like, oh, tweak this, tweak this, move the mic setting. Oh, it's a little bit darker, cool. And then it was just set. Um, that one took a little bit longer to get the sounds, but we got the sounds in like five minutes, so it was great. Um, I've been exploring the Neural DSP. Uh, I, it's a new company, but they have these like all-in-one plugins. Uh, I know his sound is way different than mine, but Tozin Abasi has this like sick plugin set that's like his sounds or whatever, and the amps just sound incredible. They're super inspiring. Just turn it on, make it clean. Uh, some of the, the, the his settings are kind of mid scooped, so I just kind of even that out, and then it's it's great. So the point is, I'm not super precious about specific gear, and I'm happy that I'm not super precious about specific gear because it allows me to kind of show up anywhere. I plug it in; it's just it sounds clean and it's good. So um, I like that about not being so picky and just having a good ear, being able to adapt. You can kind of sit in at any jam session, find your setting, sit in at any studio or any, you know, guitarist magazine uh, shoot and just get a good sound. It's great. Pretty much <clears throat> any compressor now, I'll just plug it in, put all the knobs at noon and see what it's doing. That's kind of, I found most compressors, that's kind of a pretty uh, standard starting point. And then, my favorite compressors have a blend knob. Like I was talking about having a little bit of parallel compression thing. So I don't like a fully compressed sound. I like there to be some of my natural signal going through so you can hear a little more of the dynamics, but having a, a foundation of in your face compressed sound. And I think my sound is more compressed than a lot of other guitar players. Um, but my settings are normally where it's just like, kind of blended halfway in, which is cool. I think the way that I attack and the pickups I use and the settings I end up playing with on amps without the compressor, it still sounds kind of compressed. I don't know why, but it's great. I love it. This is a Highway 1 Stratocaster that I bought for $300 on Craigslist uh, when I was 21 years old. And it is I don't know if you can see, but it says number two. <laughs> I have two of them. The original number one is one that I got when I was a teenager uh, from a music store. I bought it used and um, it's like the exact same thing. It's, it's not like uh, some super expensive high-end guitar. It just feels great in my hands. I love the feel of the neck. Um, I replaced the pickups with Seymour Duncan Antiquity Surf pickups, awesome pickups, sick, clean sound, punchy, tight, in your face. Um, and this actual, this set right here is one that I asked them to kind of change the winding on and uh, just for some specific things for me uh, that I'm trying out with them, which is great, it's fun. And I guess I changed the nut because it needed to be changed. Some guitar tech told me it needed to be changed at some point, so I said, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, but other than that, it's stock. Yeah. And the Highway 1, I love because it has 22 frets. I like being able to get that. <laughs> uh, and it also, because I, have, because I like a guitar with 22 frets, it keeps me from being tempted to buy vintage Fender guitars because they're all 21 frets. So it saves me a lot of money too. 